I'm absolutely glad to be back in Florida here. But I am so proud of you. Because remember when we spoke together, you weren't together. And um, you thought you were. <laughs> but I look at me too, and I wasn't any better together he, than he was. So all I know is I have filleted myself open. Really filleted myself open. And I've had to look at my truth. It's my truth. It's my experience. And all I want you to know is every possibility is out there. I'm living it. You know, I'll be 60 next year. <clears throat> and um, 60 is a big time because I shouldn't even be alive today. In uh, 1998, I was 46 years old and I was knocked down with a heart attack that went, took me out, literally. Now, I did not flatline. I had an out-of-body experience. But as Hannah and I know, because Hannah's here, because Hannah had the same experience, and it's almost like when two people have been across, you know, crossover, we have a different foreign language, don't we? It's almost like we were talking a foreign language. I heard my best friend, Fran, of uh, 56 years, heard us talking. She said, what were you talking? I said, death talk. And she said, death talk? You talk to me like that all the time. No, I'm not dead. I said, she had died, and we had an experience. You want... You can't wrap that up in words. It's an experience. I wish everybody could die because you're not going to anyway. That's what we've got to remember. You're not going to die. It's been promised you over and over. This is eternal life. Now you have an opportunity to either choose it in hell or choose it in heaven. And I walked through it at 46, till 46 years in hell thinking I was in heaven. I had it all. I had the big cars. I had the, well, my children were driving Mercedes. I was driving vans. What does that mean? I had a $5,000 carat diamond sitting on my hand. And the next day, the nurse was looking at me and I was handing it to her and said, what does it really matter? It doesn't really matter. Because matter doesn't matter. When you go over there, there's no keys, there's no cars, there's no garages. And by golly, I'm going to tell you something, you're not going to be driving in a house. You're not going to have one. You really are going to have to depend on who you are and what you are. And I said, you know, I, yes, I was in accolades of the man of, you know, of the world of man. I was blessed, yes. The governor touched my soul. The governor, my children, my eighth grade children wrote the governor a letter and talked about me. And the next thing I know, I'm up at the mansion thinking I'm going to have a tour. Thank you for bringing that up. And I look around and my kids are just, and here comes the governor's wife. I'm thinking, holy shit. You know, man, we're in big trouble here. The governor's wife is coming and she starts talking about in front of my children, in front of the parents and saying, you know, we have been honored to have this woman. And she starts reading the letter that my eighth graders wrote about me. You're talking about putting somebody into humbleness. My knees want it. And I am a motivational speaker. I've been speaking for 30 years. I am an actress. So I've been up here, but my knees were like this because they were going to, you know, but I was touched just like I am touched by Jeremy, just like I'm touched about the ones who I've been seeing here for the last two years. You touch my soul because I look at you and I see you in the growth. I look at you, Sylvia, oh my God, it touched my soul. Because first time in a long time, you all, I came back with no teacher's manual. If you've ever been a teacher, you had to have a manual, you know. I had none. I had to make the manual as I was going. And the only way you made the manual is you took the first step and then you prayed. I oh God, I hope it's the right one. My whole life, everything I knew was ripped out from under me. My family of 30 years. My husband had a marriage of 30 years. Three months shy of 30 years. Gone. Children gone. House gone. Cars gone. Everything. And I'm back on Angel Avenue and that's where I was raised. Yeah, Angel Avenue. Can you imagine? It's a great come-in line. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, here comes Virginia Drake, and she lives on Angel Avenue. Oh, you know, and she's died. Ooh, you know, that's great. And I've got in front of crowds and said, you're God, and I've been shut down. 
But I'm telling you, inside you have a being. You have an empowerment that it is an experience that I want everyone to have. And you don't think you can because I thought I was having an experience. It was nothing compared to what I'm having now. I look in every one of you and I see the greatness and the glory of God within each and every one of you. Why are we holding it back? Why are we afraid? And how many times have I been trying to be shut down? I was shut down and I thought I was about that high. Huh? But I came back stronger the next time. And then I came back smarter. You don't go telling everybody they're God until they're ready to hear it. Because all God means to me, because God spoke to me and said, goodness over doubt, God. The minute you start doubting yourself, you lose your goodness. You lose who you are because you're starting to fold into what man's world or the world out there that was ruling what we think is victims. We're not victims here. We've never been victims here. But you damn well think you're a victim. How many feel like victims? I did. Heck, I had a heart attack. I was dying. Everything. Victim, 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 victim. I was victim to my school. I was victim to my mother. I was victim to my husband. I was victim to the Parks and Recreation League in Versailles, Kentucky. I was a victim. I had to be there with my children when I was supposed to be somewhere else. I was a victim to baking cakes and making cookies. Oh, God, you all, whoever got those, help them. I'm telling you, we did things against ourselves thinking it was the right thing. I don't want you to do another thing against yourself. I want you to have the courage to stand and say, no, that's not for me. And you're going to see him go, ah, you're going to go, whew, that was close. Because you know what that feels like when you're getting up and you're talking something different. I remember when I was talking a foreign language and everybody else was talking English, I was going up. Because I was talking a foreign language. A language that nobody else was hearing because I was walking a different path. It was because my eyes were woke up. I awoke in 19, June 2nd, 1998. I woke up and I saw the truth. And you know what? Let me hear you. I'll tell you my degrees. I'm a psychiatric social worker. You're talking about knowing the mind. I knew the mind. Maslow, self-realization. That's what I knew. You all, we're at the Maslow area. We're at the pyramid. We're at self-realization. And what the hell does that mean? It means you're realizing who you really are. And who is that? That will be determined by you. Not by me. Not by the Bible. Not by Jeremy. By you and your soul. First thing, God first. God first. And I don't know where we got that out of alignment, but we certainly did. And then we, and it's then you. God, you, family, job. Follow that order, then you don't have to worry about a job because you won't need it because when it's God's first, everything's perfect. So why are you worried? And I understand it. Listen to those babies. Now, I got up here two years ago, and I remember standing, and I said, I need spiritual warriors. And I remember everybody said, oh, 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 we're going to fight. Uh -uh. The minute the war stops inside, and I used to say this, when the war stops inside, the war on the outside stops. Folks, there won't be a war in Iran or Iraq if we'd stop it right in here. Can't exist, won't exist, won't even be created. We're the creators of this. When are you going to take your personal responsibility and say, it's enough? Enough is enough. I work with abused people. I work with, I work with murderers. I just had a, a guy who came in not too long ago at the office, or my house, sitting across from me and said, I murdered someone. Now you're talking about my demon said, get the hell out, run, run. But I knew I had murdered somebody too. Me. So what's the difference from him and me? Nothing, because how many times did I sell myself for somebody else? Place no gods before thee. I thought somebody else's ideals was much better than mine. I thought that my mother, I should have served much more as a good daughter. I knew all the rules, but I couldn't follow them because there was too many rules and too many people and too many gods. And I died that day, June the 2nd, 1998. I died, but I'm resurrected. I'm alive. I'm awake. And nobody's going to put my light out. I don't care who you are because I'm stepping off the cross. I don't have to do crucifixion anymore. 
Now, if you're into the mode of crucifixion and victimness, you're not going to like these words because I'm going to insult you and I'm going to make you mad because that's what I'm up here to do is insult you and make you mad. Because it is not about me, it'll be about you and I'm going to be the mailman. Just like I said, I was telling this group here before, you know, my uh, mail lady, Lisa, doesn't stand outside my mailbox. Oh, my God, she's got a bill. Oh, my God. And I haven't seen her. And she hasn't been out there. I haven't been seeing her run around my mailbox. She shoves it in, goes to the next box. If you have a message, and I said this up here, you all, I am, I am bold to go to a restaurant, and I have friends with me, and they're going, oh, no, tell me, please, God, tell me, you're not going over there to that woman, and you're not going, yes, I am. Oh, 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 let's, let's eat, let's eat, let's eat fast. And they have stuck through me through, oh, you all have no idea. He has gone through so much when I used to hold my hands up above his gated community, and she said, friend, she's out there healing people with her hands. You know, this poor man doesn't understand a word I'm saying, but he follows whatever it is because he has faith in me. He's seen it. He said, I know you have something that comes out of your hand, that voodoo stuff. I don't know what it is. <laughs> and he's been with me to restaurants, and he said, please, God, don't go. And then his family says, it doesn't matter. Let her go. <laughs> because I will fall down on my knees. I will stand in your face. Because if that's the message that God wants me to give you, doesn't matter you're going to pick up your hand and hit me, because I've had people slap me. And I stood there. And I understood what Jesus meant. Turn the other cheek. Mm -hmm. Because it's not about them. It's about I delivered the message. It doesn't matter how they received it. We're messengers here, folks. And this is a community. And you have an opportunity of a lifetime. Believe me, you have an opportunity of a lifetime. We can change this simply by right here, right now, this very moment, just by recognizing who you are. You are God incarnate body. You are the goodness that you were told you were all along. Nobody was lying. But we've been hit, knocked, put under the basket. Don't shine your light. Don't say that. You offend. That's not politically correct. B.S. There's nothing here politically correct. But truth. Way and life. And I have made many of you all out in that audience mad as hell. And I thank you that I did. Because if that's what I came in to make you mad at, then you know one finger pointing, three fingers pointing back. Make sure you look. And when I hear Jeremy, I followed him, and I followed him, and I was going to make sure I was going to follow you, wasn't I? I was stuck. He knew. That's pretty, she ain't going to leave. Because I kept saying, you're more than what you are. You're more. And I'm saying that because when I see him, when I see you still coming back, that tells me, God tells me, look what you're doing with them.